All right, guys, today we are going to talk about scent control. There seems to be a broad range of opinions when it comes to scent control, and most of them have some pretty good points. You have people like John Eberhardt, who swears by it and has even created a whole scent control regiment for it. And on the other side, you have people whose scent control might be to step in a puddle or a cow patty on the way to the stand if it's convenient. So as a simple-minded person who generally doesn't like to spend his time or money on things that don't work, I just want to know the benefits of scent control and is it worth my time and money to buy and apply this stuff whenever the season rolls around? So what is scent? Well, according to well-known biologist, Dr. Bronson Strickland from the Mississippi State University Deer Lab, he explains scent as volatile organic compounds or VOCs. So when talking about your body releasing scent, VOCs start out as organic compounds that are being released from your body. And due to their high vapor pressure, a lot of the molecules evaporate into the air around you. And according to a research study, there are about 1800 VOCs that come out of our body. Of those, 872 come from your breath. 532 comes from your skin and hair. 359 comes from your saliva. And if you have to take the Browns to the Super Bowl while you're out in the woods, 381 comes from your feces. So that mixed with the bacterial odors that come from your clothing, it's pretty safe to say that we stink. Now that we know what scent is, let's talk about how it travels through a deer's nose. So when a whitetail gets downwind of you, or maybe it cuts your trail walking to or from your stand, it inhales its scent molecules through its nose, which get caught on little hair-like structures called cilia. And I'm not trying to make you relive biology because trust me, I wasn't the best at it either, but just bear with me for one second. So once the scent molecules get caught by the cilia, the molecules dissolve through the mucus and are sent to the deer's olfactory epithelium. And this is just a place where receptors translate these scent signals as electrical impulses and send them through the nerve up to the part of the whitetail's brain called the olfactory bulb. From there, the bulb sends the electrical impulses through the olfactory nerve and into the brain's limbic system, where it analyzes everything. Chlorophyll? More like borophyll. Right? And just throw in a cool fact, the whitetail's epithelium has around 297 million olfactory receptors, while humans only have around 5 million. Also, the whitetail's olfactory bulb is about four times as large as a human's. So this is why deer have a lot better nose than us hunters. And depending on what type of VOC molecules the deer picked up on and smelled, the deer will then start to recognize which smells lead to things like mating, danger, or food. And through the years, a deer will get more acquainted with certain smells and will be able to react quicker. So that's why sometimes you will have fawns that will wander downwind of you and they'll kind of stop and recognize that there's a foreign smell in the area, but they really won't react to it. And I assume that's because they haven't associated certain types of human smells with danger yet. Versus that old nanny doe who cuts your track and immediately busts out blowing, letting every deer in the county know something's wrong. So now that we know how much of our odor a deer can actually smell, Let's get into what we can do about it. And right out of the gate, I am here to say that playing the wind is by far the best type of scent control. But if you've been hunting long enough, you know it's just a matter of time until one comes in where you were least expecting it and it gets a good whiff of you. And if your luck is anything like mine, it's probably the big one you've been chasing all season. So with that being said, it's not a bad idea to have just a little insurance policy, meaning some sort of scent elimination product, which usually comes in the form of laundry detergent, body wash, Wash or scent elimination spray. Now, would I trust any scent elimination product to fool a deer's nose 100% of the time? Absolutely not. But in my own personal opinion, that's not what it's for. All I'm trying to do is stack as many odds in my favor as possible. And if I can fool one out of every 10 deer, or at least just give me a few extra seconds to squeeze off a shot, I would consider that a win. I heard Mark Kenyon from Wired to Hunt talk about scent control products, and the way he explained it really stuck with me. He referred to it as Swiss cheese. Swiss cheese. You see, each of these products still helps a little bit, but they all still have their flaws. So basically, the more layers of cheese you stack on, the smaller the holes get. For example, the stuff we've been using is from Elimishield, and they have a five-step system that seems to really work well for us. In short, they have hair and body wash to get yourself clean, a core body foam for after your shower that's supposed to stay active all day, a scent eliminating spray for your clothes and boots, a scent-free laundry detergent, and for extra measure, they have this treatment called Extend. So in this example, you can 
see how it can put some odds in your favor. Now with that being said, if any of these steps are inconvenient to you in any way, maybe you can't afford it financially or all this extra hassle kind of takes the fun out of it for you, this isn't gonna make or break whether you're successful in the woods or not. Because trust me, we do not spray down every time or take showers before every single hunt. Sometimes we are on day five of a hunt and the only thing available is a water bottle shower and that is good enough for us. But on that same note, if you hunt with some buddies and at night you guys are sharing a truck or a tent, I'd at least recommend a water bottle shower and some of that core body foam because you will definitely be able to tell a difference later that evening whenever bedtime rolls around. So whether you use scent eliminating products or not, just do what you can with what you have. If you can afford it, it doesn't hurt to try out, but if not, just play the wind and hunt smart. And obviously you guys are watching this video to try to prepare for the season and try to harvest that big giant buck, but just keep in mind that in the grand scheme of things, harvesting that deer really doesn't mean much. I understand we all love to hunt and we desire to get that record book buck, but I kind of feel like we need to take a step back and start doing the prep work for the right book, the book of life. Romans 10 9 says, if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And if you guys have any questions or maybe you just want to reach out and talk some Jesus, our DMs are always open. So with that, if you guys enjoyed this kind of content, be sure to give this video a like and hit that sub button. And don't forget that Jesus loves you.